Thomas the tank engine wouldn't stop being a nuisance. Night after night, he kept the other engines awake. I'm tired of pushing coaches. I want to see the world. The other engines didn't take much notice, for Thomas was a little engine with a long tongue. But one night, Edward came to the shed. He was a kind little engine and felt sorry for Thomas. I've got some freight cars to take home tomorrow. If you take them instead of me, I'll push coaches in the yard. Thank you, said Thomas. That will be nice. Next morning, Edward and Thomas asked their drivers, and when they said yes, Thomas ran off happily to find freight cars. Now, the freight cars are silly and noisy. They talk a lot and don't attend to what they are doing. And I'm sorry to say they play tricks on an engine who is not used to them. Edward knew all about the freight cars. He warned Thomas to be careful, but Thomas was too excited to listen. The shunter fastened the coupling, and when the signal dropped, Thomas was ready. The conductor blew his whistle. Beep, beep, answered Thomas and started off. But the freight cars weren't ready. Oh, oh, they screamed. Wait, Thomas, wait. But Thomas wouldn't wait. Come on, come on, he puffed. All right, don't fuss. All right, don't fuss, grumbled the cars. Thomas began going faster and faster. Whish, he whistled as he rushed through Henry's tunnel. Hurry, hurry, called Thomas. He was feeling very proud of himself. But the cars grew crosser and crosser. At last, Thomas slowed down as he came to Gordon's Hill. Steady, warned the driver, as they reached the top. He began to put on the brakes. We're stopping, we're stopping, called Thomas. No, 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 answered the cars, bumping into each other. Go on, go on. Before the driver could stop them, they had pushed Thomas down the hill and were rattling and laughing behind him. Poor Thomas tried hard to stop them from making him go too fast. Stop pushing! Stop pushing! He hissed. But the cars took no notice. Go on! Go on! They giggled in their silly way. There's the station. Oh dear, what shall I do? cried Thomas. They rattled straight through and swerved into the goods yard. Thomas shut his eyes. I must stop! When he opened his eyes, he saw he had stopped just in front of the buffers. There, watching him, was Sir Topham Hatt. What are you doing here, Thomas? he asked. I've brought Edward's freight cars, Thomas answered. Why did you come so fast? I didn't mean to. I was pushed, said Thomas. You've got a lot to learn about freight cars, Thomas. After pushing them about here for a few weeks, you'll know almost as much about them as Edward. Then you'll be a really useful engine.